You know, it's not a secret spot, but it's it's always kind of been known as a surf destination. It's a little, little jewel in Europe. I heard it's a really wide open, perfect barrel, and um, it breaks really hard, board breaking waves. I've heard, you know, over the years, lots of stories, and uh, a lot of people compare it to uh, Le Gravier in France. Looks like um, a cross between a pipe, Porto Escondido. Powerful, punchy, pretty gnarly. Every day I score pretty good waves, so that's the best thing. You know, I think it's the right time of the year for here, and I think we'll get some swells. Call it good fortune, impeccable timing, or just good planning. The Rip Curl Pro Search, now in its fifth year as a World Championship Tour event, has experienced some of the most memorable surf conditions on tour. Yeah, I've fortunately been able to surf in all um, five of the Rip Curl Search events, and my favourite would definitely have to be Mexico. That was just still some of the best waves I've ever surfed in my life. Each year, it seems like more people gravitate towards this, this idea of a floating contest in a different spot every time. Fortunately enough for Rip Curl, man, they've had insane waves everywhere they've gone. The great thing about this event moving is you can move the dates. You can look at the history of a location for the last 10 years and you can go, what are the two most consistent weeks for swell over six feet in the last 10 years? In this case, the back end of October, so you go, we'll go there. In 2009, the floating license of the Rip Curl Pro Search heads to one of Europe's premier wave locations, Portugal. Yeah, everybody was uh, frothing with this contest, and now is the time, so everybody's it's, it's just Desperate to, to watch the best surfers on our best waves. The quiet fishing village of Peniche, found in Portugal's southwest, will play host to the ninth event on the men's ASP World Tour and the fourth event for the women's World Tour. It's um, a really good thing for the girls, and um, we're all really excited because it's probably like the best waves we've seen on tour so far. So, um, yeah, we're just excited to get out there. Not short of options. Rip Curl contest directors have three possible locations to run the event. The primary site being the famous Super Tubos. Super Tubos is a, it's a beach break, faces south, it's good on the north wind. And uh, since we have a harbour next, it's a deep water beach break, that's why it gets so power. I hope they can at least have one good day in Super Tubos to show, to show Portugal to the world, you know. The backup spots seem like they can be just as good. There's sort of like a left hand sort of reef that could be good if it's a bit bigger and they've also got some other beach breaks up the coast a little bit that get a bit more swell. You know, when it's bigger swell, it seems like it's going to be a legit wave. One thing for sure is Tiago is going to have a hell of a lot of support, Jay. I could only imagine Tiago's cheering squad, you know. <laughs> We've got it rumoured that uh, the weekend's going to be pretty big. That's what I heard. It's supposed to be like 100,000 people. I think the whole country will be here. There's going to be so many people down the beach, on the beach, that kind of scares me. Prior to the search event, the Men's World Tour visited the Basque Country in the north of Spain for the Billabong Pro Mundaka. Sometimes fickle, this intense barreling left-hander can produce one of the best waves found in Europe. Unfortunately for competitors, bad swell and weather forced the majority of competition to the nearby beach break, Sopalana. With both Joel Parkinson and Nick Fanning bowing out in the early rounds, Brazilian Adriano de Souza smashed his way through the field, defeating the nine times world champion Kelly Slater in a close fought semi final, before taking the win over Chris Davidson, claiming his first ever WCT victory. Be so close for two times one in the Gulf Coast, another one in Brazil, and uh, just um, be so happy, you know, and, uh, my days are right. Coming into this event, the world title race is extremely tight and there are mathematically 10 contenders. Yeah, it's pretty heated right now, the title, and 
and uh, anything can happen and, and uh, yeah, that's why it's such an important event. A lot of people do, don't really realise that there are that many world con title contenders here. Um, everything seems like it's on Mick and Joel, which they'd have to stumble pretty hard for the other people to get into it. As of now, I think just being in the right headspace and physical zone, I think it's Mick. I've said from the start that it will be Joel. I think injured or not, Joel's going give, to give it a huge crack. It's cool that two guys that grew up together, they're giving you know, each other a little run for their money. Growing up together, surfing together and competing together, it's ironic these two guys find themselves number one and two in the world only 44 points apart. Being the race with one of my best friends, there's other people in there, but uh, yeah, it's cool. I'm sure we'll look back on this and and have a few beers over it <laughs> and talk, talk rubbish to each other. After winning the first two events of the 2009 ASP Dream Tour and being tipped as this year's contender, Parkinson relinquished his stranglehold on the ratings following three consecutive equal 17s. Definitely think this year would have taken a lot of time off my life. It's been such an emotional roller coaster ride of highs and lows and it's definitely going to be a good story for the grandkids, you know, when I actually can sit down and devour it all and digest it. But um, as of now, I'm kind of only thinking of the immediate future. The day before competition was due to commence, a huge swell was rumoured to be hitting overnight. It's like on the waves, we have a massive uh, swell coming and I don't know if it's going to be rideable, but we'll find out. Storm warnings forced officials to remove all webcast and media trucks from the primary site, Super Tubos, in fear of high water. That's a, a concern that everything goes fine. Last night with that high tide, they're calling it 15 foot. Despite the damage, um, it's a little bit exciting, you know, really, to have a swell like this for the contest. And Damien Hardman's up at the other site just trying to work out if they can get started up there. With damage control underway and competition conditions unsurfable, the contest was called off for the day, much to the delight of the jet ski patrol. <laughs> 